You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. This is the No Doubt About It podcast. No Doubt About It. Now your hosts, Christy and Mark Runcetti. Well, happy Christmas, I guess, right? It's going to be a fun holiday type show today. Happy Christmas. Happy Are we Christmas. changing, we're changing We're British. it up? We're British now. Oh, they say, do they? Do they really? Ava, don't they say happy Christmas? They yeah, do? They okay. Do. Okay. We should have Ava tap in and, and give us her, her best British accent of saying, um, just wishing everybody the, the best holiday. Wishing you all the best holiday this season. <laughs> <laughs> Very I nice. Love, Ava's been watching, um, what's, what is it? It's called the midwife. <laughs> Call the midwife. And so she has taken on the British accent. So, okay. Uh, so, anyway, but yes, we're here today. It is Thursday. It is our holiday edition. That's right. You got your Christmas sweater on, Mark. I do. Well, here's the thing about this sweater before we introduce uh, Squire and Louise. Uh, I, I, uh, this thing is warm. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're start I've, sweating. Lost, I've lost at least three, four, three, four pounds of water weight. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know if I'm going to make it to the end of this. You might black out. I might black out. That's all right. I'll take care yeah, of it. Or you may have to roll in an IV just to get to the end of you know this interview. But we have two people that the minute we knew we were going to do a holiday edition of the show, these are the two people I wanted to have. Right. Because they are absolutely perfect for this. And you'll see why here in just a second. And, and they are Squire Rushnell and Luis Duarte. They are the pair that is behind the 40-Day Prayer Challenge which we have done. Mm -hmm. uh, they are behind uh, the Godwink stories, which I love on Hallmark. <laughs> oh, you know I, this. Oh, Mark's a big Hallmark guy. Like, yep, yep. You can't, now, get an, you can't get enough of any of those type of movies. Oh, I love them. It's your go-to. So, yeah. Yes. And, and so, and they've done uh, books, Couples Who Pray, just all different sorts of, of really cool, God-centered, positive content that if you really even are, are kind of, lost a little bit or you think gosh you know is something going to get better is does god know i'm there it is is god listening to me is he does he hear me and and i think after we're done with this interview i think you'll realize he is listening to you and he does hear you so squire Luis, thanks very much for joining us well hi well, there well happy christmas to all of you i love it she can do you guys can, you and ava can do a whole scene together oh, yeah they're both shipped in from london yeah, for this event. very nice you guys first of all uh i want to just kind of give people a little bit of your your background um squire i know you started you know, you go way back even to Good Morning America days and things like that. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the entertainment industry, producing and, and, and putting together uh, uplifting content, and then how Luis ended up in this and how you guys ended up as a team together. That's great. Well, I, I got very much involved in talk shows very early on in my career, and uh, that led up the way to Good Morning America. I ran that just at the point when uh, we were just two and a half rating points, which isn't that much. Right. And, uh, and so uh, I ran that for four years. We ended up with six rating points and we beat the Today Show, yes. um, yes. you know, the yeah. big giant Today Show. It was like little David against the Today Show was <laughs> David Hartman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What year were, were, the, what year were you at uh, Good Morning America? I was there from, uh, oh, goodness sakes. It was really around 80, uh, I think it was like, um, goodness sakes, I was going to say it started two years. It started in, in 75, so I must have come on board in about 77, Got it. And okay. 78, something yep. like that. Yep. And so um, we we took over the, the, the airwaves in the morning, and that was really one of the happiest times of my life. I loved it. I loved that achievement. But another one, I was also running children's television at ABC, which is 
obviously a different headset. You know, you kind of put on a whole different head to go into that department. You know, a littler head, you know, <laughs> you sit in little chairs in the executive office, like kindergarten chairs on parents' night. And so, um, so uh, you know, during that period, we had the ABC after school specials that came along. And um, then uh, I became one of the fathers of Schoolhouse Rock. Oh and, my gosh. And, Schoolhouse Rock. I love that. Show, so. Yep. and so and so uh my legacy in this world is conjunction junction so yeah so that's how i got started and it was in that process that i happened to meet my wonderful wife a story that we'll tell you i'm sure in a moment <laughs> sure so yeah so you guys meet and then it's interesting because Christy and I uh, first met in in TV, and, and and but yes, we worked together a little bit, but we weren't dating at that time. And, and now that we do this show and we do some other projects together and other shows, it, there is a certain um, unique rhythm that comes to working with your spouse. So when you guys met, how did that eventually lead to working together? And, and what's the secret sauce to making that work? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because when we first met, Squire, of course, very was a, first, very yeah. first. Squire was at ABC working yeah. in Kid Bid, yep. and he was putting a show together with Sid and Marty Croft. And Marty Croft, who we just lost the other day, mm -hmm. went to be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, Squire uh, hired me as Witchy Poo to be on this. Well, you actually saw me as Witchy Poo. I saw you in, then, as Witchy Poo on a, on a stage. In New York, for HR Pop, you were stuff. doing the uh, the mm -hmm. road show, you know, like the costume shows that go on the road, like Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. Well, the Crofts were doing Witchy Poo mm -hmm. or um, HR Pop, HR stuff. Puff and stuff. And I had taken my little girls to it, in my first marriage, and they were like seven and eight, and and the star of the show burst on the stage. Green face, long nose, ward on it. Since I've since had removed. And it was Louise. <laughs> and so so then the Crofts were looking to put together a little like rock group, kind of like the monkeys, to wrap around their Saturday morning lineup. And they were missing one person. They said, the only thing missing is we need a comedian. And Squire said, Well, how about this girl who plays Witchy Poo? So they hired me. So that's how we really met. But it wasn't until many, many years later, two marriages later for Squire, because I'm Mrs. <laughs> Rushnell the third. Well, I had to practice. Yeah. And me, I was divorced. That's a whole nother story, but it's a God wink. Praise the Lord. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord, called according to his purpose. <laughs> uh, I didn't think it at the time. But anyway, so Squire and I met. I was doing an off-Broadway show in New York, and he brought his son there and it was a real god wink how they even got there because the meeting was canceled and in, in uh in canada, canada. I, was, I was taking my my uh, now separated from my wife and uh we actually were going through the divorce process and i was working in washington i would come up every weekend pick up the 14 year old brain injured son mm -hmm. and i would take him back to washington except this week i was taking him to canada i had a business meeting there and i had got him all excited about going to Toronto, uh, a family friendly city and so forth. And it got derailed. I got off the plane at LaGuardia and I got a phone call that the meeting in Canada has been canceled. So I thought, oh, wow, I can't disappoint him. So I said, I tell you what, we're going to stay overnight here and we're going to find a Broadway show to go to. Well, I looked in the New York Times and there was dream stuff a little off-Broadway show mm -hmm. starring Louise Duarte. <laughs> and I said, Grant, you're going you're gonna to be very pleased with this because maybe we could go backstage and meet the star of this show. Well, they, we, we did meet in the lobby. And when I saw Squire, God just spoke to my heart and said, he's the one. I just oh, knew. And yeah. we went out for coffee and we've had coffee every day every since. Every day since. <laughs> And you know, it, that was about 25 years. That's ago. right. And you know, we look at our lives now and say, yeah, we made mistakes in our first and second marriage. But you know, we learn by everything that that we our journey in life. And when I look, you know, we live our lives forward, but we understand it backwards. 
when I look back now, I see where God strategically had placed me in this point in my journey. I was going to learn something about forgiveness, actually, because my husband left me for another woman and sued me for alimony. But anyway, <laughs> okay, that's another story. Not that I'm bitter. That's Not that I'm bitter. Uh, but I did. I learned to forgive him. I learned to forgive him. And, and that's what the Lord needed to teach me. And, and then when I met Squire... And I knew that the Lord was saying, I kept saying, God, why, why did my marriage end? Why did he leave me for this woman? I have two kids. And, and I felt in my spirit, the Lord was saying, because I'm going to take you someplace where he can't go. Because a year after I was married to this man, it was a year after I accepted Christ in my life. And he never did for 20 years. I was married to him for 20 years. He never accepted the Lord. And then when I met Squire, it truly is words and music and what what we have been able to do together. And honestly, this sounds this this sounds kind of corny, but we've never had a fight. Mm -hmm. We've never had a fight wow. in, in the 25 years. Yeah. But he's starting to aggravate me now. I just have to say, like the way he was snoring last night was just yeah. really annoying. So you get up uh, and like, is this the day that we yeah. have? <laughs> this could be it. I'm just saying. So that's our love story in a nutshell. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Two <Okay>. nuts. <laughs> oh, boy. And you, you started working together after that? Like, let's talk about that a little bit. What was your first project that when you got after you were together? What did you guys start working on? Well, I was running a cable television network in Washington. And uh, and uh, I, I, oh, I had that was that Broadway show. I saw the Broadway show. Mm -hmm. And and that's when I was running the cable network and I said, you know what, why don't we develop a series? And so we developed uh, a show that was all built around Louise and her wacky characters. <laughs> and, you know, it was a nice little show for, yeah. for the small cable network. And that's how we got to work together. Mm -hmm. And, and then and you were just starting to work on your Godwing books. Yes. And so yeah. we, uh, you know, I count, I talked to her a lot about, uh, you know, when God winks and, and, and what the God winks meant. Uh, in the beginning, I didn't know what they meant. Mm -hmm. All I knew was that, that I had always been fascinated with coincidence, but I was also very suspicious of coincidence being the word that filled the need that I was trying to talk about. Because mm -hmm. And and then as I talked to more and more people uh, about coincidences, and they'd say, well, what do you call a coincidence that isn't a coincidence? Well, they knew what I was talking about. A coincidence that comes from God just didn't seem like you would call it a coincidence. Mm -hmm. So that all evolved into uh, our search for the word. What do you call that? And um, we spent a lot of time on that, praying about it, talking about it, and you know, over dinner with people, what do you think coincidence means, and so on and so forth. And somebody would give us a little, just a little clue. They'd say, one person said, well, I think it has something to do with faith. We said, yeah, 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 okay, I think so. And then somebody else said something about, well, maybe it's winking. It was, wait, 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 yeah, maybe it's a winking, maybe maybe it's God winking, maybe it's a God wink. And that's how that mm -hmm. all started to evolve. But in the beginning, I honestly thought that God wink was kind of another word for coincidence. I mean, that's what we were doing. And I had no idea what any of that meant until finally I looked up coincidence in the dictionary. It says two remarkable events that come together without apparent cause that's not a god wink right, right, because right. a god wink are two remarkable events that come together with cause and that cause is divine mm -hmm. so it it really took a while in the uh, the uh, the evolution of the uh, of the word and a lot of readers uh, contributing to this mm -hmm. this process so that we have just now come to a point where we have about 10 Godwink principles, and that's the next book we're writing. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it's like we've done a an archaeological dig into our own past and our own study about this this whole journey and what people have told us, and and the and the principles that have evolved out of that. So 
each one of these principles is going to be a different chapter and then we'll have stories in that chapter that exemplify the principle and so then you guys that's kind of how we've evolved okay and and so and you guys started by writing the godwinks books right and then eventually you work out a deal where, where you get some interest and there's the godwinks stories there's devotional stuff there's a bunch of stuff we're mm -hmm. showing a little bit of it right now but um so it starts with some of the books and then eventually you get hooked up with what happens at hallmark right is that the first kind of entry mm -hmm. into this and can you explain how you got the first a movie off the ground and it kind of ties into Christmas pretty closely. Sure. Well, I would have to give a lot of credit to Kathy Lee Gifford. I know a she's a friend of ours, by the way. Uh, she is great. <laughs> yeah, yep. she's the best. Yep. And uh, she always loved the God wink thesis and everything. And so we said that, you know, we wanted to go to Hallmark and present it. It would be perfect for Hallmark. And we asked her if she would be one of the stars and if we got a movie and she would executive produce with us and and uh, she said i'll i'll walk in with you with with hallmark so we called bill abbott who was the head of hallmark at that time and of course it helped to say kathy lee gifford and swearing louise would like to have a meeting with you you think we would have ever gotten that meeting <laughs> without kathy not. lee on our arm i don't think so no so we walk in of course kathy was adorable and she was just going on and on and on and bill said that's it. I want to buy it. Yeah. So they put it on the air, a Godwink Christmas. They wanted to do it, obviously, for Christmas. Right. And it did so well in the ratings. People kept saying, we want more of these because they're true stories. And one of the things people say is, yeah, I love that it's a rom-com, that it's a love story. But I love that it's true because yeah. at the end, you see the real people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. And so can we, uh, Ava, we have, I think... I, one of our first clips, we actually have one of the trailers from A God Went Christmas, the first one. And I think it's the oh, first video clip I have set up, Ava. So if we could roll that real quick, and I think you'll see, I think Kathy Lee narrates it too. So let, let's just take yeah. a quick listen to this. You get a feel for, for what it's all about. All flights are canceled due to fog. When things like that happen, it's important to see things in a different light. It's kind of miraculous. So you think everything is God winking at me? How many things had to happen in just the right ways, at just the right time, so that you could get to know each other? Listen to that heart of yours, honey. A Godwink Christmas on Hallmark Movies. And <laughs> so funny. So, so Christy and I have this uh, debate. So I love the Godwink movies. I love that kind of that kind of setup. Mm -hmm. I, I just love it. And this is one of the first movies I ever saw on Hallmark because it was I was running I think it was in, for US Senate at the time and, and, and it was during Christmas and I watched this and it actually ah. what's interesting is it takes place sort of near where you guys live at least the setting is oh, around is. the corner yeah it's actually a block and a half it's a block yeah, and a half so, yeah no it's it, it, it's exactly so you have you know you live you know, on Martha's Vineyard yeah. yeah yeah and she flies out and goes out and stays for a night I believe at this guy's in if I remember the correctly mm -hmm. she can't get back off the island it's fantastic right. so Mark this is what Mark does so during the Senate race you know it was obviously very challenging and it's kind of you know a heated situation in that you know kind of just a heavy day mm. so he would find the movies on Hallmark at night to be kind of an escape oh, and they oh, always ended wonderful really positive and so he would tell me about this and what Mark does is he looks up where was this one filmed because of mm. course it always has snow there's always yeah. like you know little mm. town which is mark's like dream and so i used to make a lot of them <laughs> i still make fun of him but he he, oh, yes. he is addicted to anything yeah. that is remotely like this and he does like know. you know he loves the god wink part absolutely and so tell, <laughs> tell us a little bit you guys give us an idea so for people who want to kind of understand the god wink story give us an example of one that you think for some people who may just say, oh, gosh, that was coincidence. But for those of us uh, who who really do take our faith seriously, and even for those who may eventually take their faith seriously, realizing that God does have a role, can you kind of tell a few of those stories? Yeah, let me tell you a story from one of our favorite books at this time of year. Yeah. It's called God Wing Christmas Stories. Shameless plug. Yeah, I well, no, it. no it's, it just <laughs> happens to be Christmas. I don't know. You, you know. On the table. Yeah. Anyway, this is about Roma Downey, who you all know is a wonderful actress. She was in a show called Touched by an Angel, which when it was at its peak, she was seen by 20 million people a week. I mean, there were three 
channels at that time. So they all had to watch those three channels and they got great ratings. But just before Christmas, Roma was spending some time at a Christmas house at a uh, children's hospital. And she was visiting the children. She was wearing a little uh, red Santa hat all you know, trimmed in white. And she just looked cute as a button as she was going around talking to the kids. And so she walked down the hall and she walked by an open door and she saw just a horrendous scene because nurses were holding up a, a woman mm. who seemed to be struggling to hold to, to hold her balance. And she was coming toward the door and, and beyond the woman, there was the form of a child on the bed. Mm -hmm. And instantly Roma thought, oh my goodness, I, I don't want to interrupt them. She, she was going to continue on. But the grieving mother looked up and her eyes locked with Roma's. And she said, there you are. And so now, Roma is looking at this woman who is looking back at her and she didn't know what to say, but the woman continued and she said, I ask for an angel to come and be with my daughter. Oh, oh my Lord. And there you are. Mm. And Roma, Roma wanted to say, no, 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 no. I'm just an actor who plays an angel. But she couldn't do that. So she reached out and she held the mother and she said, let me pray with you. She just prayed with her for a few moments. And then she went on her way. And outside, she, she couldn't wait to just call up her best friend, her confidant, Della Reese, who was her co-actor on, on, on the series. And she said, Della, I feel like such a fraud. I, and, and because that woman thought I was a real angel. And I allowed her to think that. And Della Reese said, honey, sometimes we just have to step out of ourselves and out of God's way to let him serve people through us. And that was a God wink for Roma Downey that really changed her life and it, it just built her faith immeasurably mm -hmm. but anyway that is the kind of hopeful story yeah. that we love to be able to tell mm -hmm. God winks always let us know that we're never alone. We were praying about this this morning. And, mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact, we, I told you that we were writing this book, God Wink Principles. And I went and I wrote down the, the principle that came out of this morning's prayer. Mm -hmm. When God winks at me, it's God telling me I'm never alone. And so those kinds of principles are tremendously important for all of us. Yeah. There's another one that we just put in a frame and it's called when I pray, I'm, I'm talking to God. When he talks to me, it's a God wink. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those are the kind of things that we've been able to learn as we've gone through this journey. And mm -hmm. I have to tell you, it's the best job that oh, either one of us have had. I mean, wonderful. we've had some great jobs. Yeah. Okay. I ran Good Morning America yeah. and Schoolhouse Rock and Louise was on the road with Tim Conway and Harvey Corman. Mm -hmm. How much fun is that? Yeah. But doing this job Absolutely. of telling stories, true stories, true stories mm -hmm. that bring people hope yes. and are now in four Hallmark movies. Yes. The fifth one's in the hopper. And yeah. we just sold our I uh, say second. Hopper. Yes. It's, <laughs> we hope it doesn't go in the hopper, but it's, <laughs> it's yeah, it's on the runway. It's on the okay, runway. Darling. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Our, and our second Netflix movie is being teed up as well. Yes. Yes. So okay. Good. Let's talk about the Netflix yeah. movie. Cause yeah. you've got a very famous Netflix movie. How did this happen? We're going to show a trailer, I think, too, at some point. But, but uh, let's talk about the making of that story. Okay. Well, that's another God wink. Yeah. You know, everything's a God wink, and yeah. and and we all have God winks. You know, our job is to get people to look for the God wink because they happen all the time. God winks are like gifts at your doorstep, but you have to open the door and open your gift. So our our co-producer Dan Angel was that nice Netflix. name huh? yeah what a angel. perfect name yeah. angel and he is he's an angel yeah. he was at netflix because he was pitching a few other of his movies because he does things on his own you know and and so he pitched everything and they turned everything down well right before he went into the meeting we called dan and we said dan you're not going to believe it but we pitched 
Ruby the dog movie and Hallmark turned it down. And he said, oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. I said, we can't either, this is a great story. And he said, well, listen, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm going into Netflix. And he said, I'll call you when I get out. So he comes out and he says, you're not gonna believe this. He said, I pitched all the movies. They didn't like any of them. I got up to leave and I said, you know, I have one more. And he pitches Ruby the dog story. Okay. And they start crying. He must have done a great job. <laughs> and they said, that's the one we want. And that, so that door closed at Hallmark, praise Jesus. Yep. You know, we were looking at that closed door and God was saying, but I have one open over here. Yep. And that's how that got made on Netflix. And it really did do well. Yeah, Rescuing Ruby is what it's called. It's done very well. And in fact, we have just, we'll, we'll just take a little bit of the trailer. We'll just listen to just Great. a couple seconds of it, just so people can can get a feel for it. So Abe, let's, let's do the trailer of uh, Rescuing Ruby. And focus. You're all over the place. You can't even sit still. But I'm ready for this. The department has no money for new dogs. Caught up in the middle. So what you're needing is a young, good-sized dog who's curious and has spirit. You think he could be a canine dog? She could be anything. <laughs> You've been to seven homes already. You cannot blow this chance. She's a handful. She's too high strung. She chews, she digs, she steals food, she never sleeps. Okay, so that that is a little feel for it. Now, by the way, Ruby <laughs> sounds a lot like a Siberian husky, yeah, but I'm just, just like our dogs. I'm just, <laughs> but, but let's explain the Godwing portion of this because it's even yeah. more fascinating that and it's really compelling when you watch the when you watch the trailer in and of itself. But you guys pull the Godwink portion out of this and explain yeah. why it's amazing. Well, it's amazing, yeah, because you know, Ruby was a shelter dog mm -hmm. and Ruby was about to be euthanized in two hours because Ruby had, uh, there was a legal issue. She had a little bit of nipping on her, you know, background. And, and she'd been turned down she, by seven families. Seven families. So they said, we can't keep unadoptable, unadoptable. dogs. Meanwhile, nutshell again, uh, our, our hero, Officer Dan O'Neill, uh, was trying to get into the canine unit, but he he he's got a he's got ADHD. He can't focus, and he's having trouble getting in. And then they said to him, "Look, we have no dogs because we don't have the money in our budget. They cost thousands. We have no money." So he goes to a shelter, and he's looking around, and he meets Ruby, and he takes Ruby, and he saves Ruby's life. And for six months, he works with Ruby, and it looks really bad, like it ain't gonna happen because Ruby's so rambunctious. Ruby ends up. Uh, being like the, the best of the best. But the woman who really saved Ruby was Pat Inman, who was the head of the you know ASPCA. She kept begging, please, just one more day, one more day. And so finally they said two hours and, you know. So what happens is Ruby finds a boy at the bottom of a ravine in Providence, Rhode Island, a very cold night, saves the boy's life. And then what happens is the mother is there to greet the boy when they bring him up on a stretcher and she meets officer Dan. Who is the mother? Pat Inman. It was her son who saved Ruby's life. And Ruby wow. say, I mean, it's just, that's, it's incredible. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's and one little added thing, one little, because if you watch it to the end in, in the credits, the dog that plays Ruby, whose name is bear. So it's, it's a, a male dog who identifies as a female. So, so the dog that played Ruby was about to be euthanized. Also, they found the dog at a shelter. Oh my God. I mean, come on. And that was thanks to my wonderful wife who said, do you think you could find a rescue dog to play said, Ruby? So we and they, a smart and they, dog. they said, you know, you can imagine what was going through the trainer's <laughs> minds. Like, you know, they get these smart German shepherds and so on yeah. and so forth. Sure. And so, getting a rescue dog, you know, that's going to wow. be a high, you know, bar to make. And, they, but they tried and they found Ruby and, oh, it was Ruby ever wonderful in that movie. Yeah. Just great. It was a parallel that was so wonderful. And only and, God could do that. And the real Ruby uh, just 
she was a diva when the movie, she loved all the attention that she was getting. Uh, you know, she had about three weeks after the movie premiered when, uh, when Officer Dan would be driving around and uh, and when she'd be in the in the in the car with him and then people say, was that Ruby? Oh, could I get, could I get a picture with Ruby? And she loved the attention. She graduated to heaven yeah. three weeks after the movie premiered. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was age. She aged she out. Aged. It was about that time, yeah. you know, yeah. about 12. She was 11. Yeah. Wasn't she yeah. like 11 when all this? Yes. Well, yeah. she was. Yeah. yeah. Well, she started uh, as a, as a uh, as she was only seven months old when Officer Dan got her. Right. But he had her for seven years, seven years on yeah. the on the core. Yeah. And uh, she was that the best is, of the best. It, actually, it was in real life because in a movie you have to contract things. Mm -hmm. In real life, it was seven years between the time that Pat Inman saved Ruby from you know by con by convincing everybody to give her another twenty four hours to find. Um, you know, a home, which she couldn't find. She crossed everybody off her list mm -hmm. and in came Officer Dan. Perfect. There he was at the end of the day and and walked out with that dog. You can just imagine the tears she had. But seven years in real life went by before Officer Dan found discovered him. her son. Ruby discovered her son at the bottom of oh, a ravine in the I woods. Know, and so it, it was it was a even a greater God wink mm -hmm. because you just wouldn't expect it, you know? And there was so um, many God winks upon God winks. We can't go into all of them, even the making of the film. But, you know, you really do see, as we say, we are on a GPS, God's positioning system. And, you know, he, he, in all our ways, he directs our steps. And, and, and that's what he does with us. You know, if we would just surrender to him and just let God, you know, direct us because oftentimes we're, we're saying, I know my sister-in-law used to say to me when I first accepted the Lord, cause I can be <laughs> stubborn. It's, she said, Louise, you're like, you say to Jesus, Jesus, pick up your cross. Come on, follow me. I know where we're going <laughs> instead of following him. And we're learning, of course, we're a lot older now, but we're learning to just say, all right, God, that door may be closed, but we're going to praise you for it because there's something else open over here that you want us to walk through that's that's going to give you glory. Mm, yeah. And when you guys, you know, let me ask you something about just some, the broader sense of, you know, the entertainment industry, because where we are now, and I think for a lot of Christians feel like, gosh, you know, the entertainment industry seems to be further and further away from faith. But I, I might argue something a little different which is, yes, there are elements of that that are happening. But at the same time, faith is starting to expand again, I think, in the entertainment industry. Do you guys feel that? And, and you're so right. There has been the tide is turning. Mm. There's been a sea change. And, and as Squire said, we, you know, you, you have to you have to look at what's going on in your industry. And we saw that it was moving in a direction where people are going to start demanding to have more light in the movies. And you saw that with Jesus Revolution, that yeah. it went through the roof. You saw that with uh, Sound, Sound of, of Freedom. Freedom. Finally getting loose. Right. You saw the that chosen. with this, chosen. The Chosen. Exactly. The chosen, yeah. And so that we're seeing that now with so many other friends of ours who are producers. We're all excited. It's like, I want to get them all together in a room and just, mm. you know, start praising yeah. Jesus. Well, yeah. we have had... Since the writer's strike was over at the end of August, uh, I could have said since uh, Mark ran for governor. No, <laughs> and it wasn't. It wasn't then. And 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 we think that there is a day of uh, reckoning there. By the way, uh, but be. uh, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we think that. But since since that time, we really felt that the that there was a movement of light that was taking place mm. from about uh, about August of this year because. We have had, uh, we, we've been full-time pre presentation makers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everything, every weekend, we're working on another presentation, mm -hmm. whether it's to Amazon Studios, mm -hmm. whether it's to another department at Netflix, whether it's to, to you know, three or four or five other uh, know, networks. And, and these are basically all uh, requests that we've had mm -hmm. for people to want to hear about God Winks. Yes. So the good news is, 
that we we feel as though that this has been the year in which Godwinks as a word has crossed the line of tipping point. Yeah. That the awareness level has now gone across that and line. Not just for us, but for yeah. all producers. You know, uh, uh, it was a few years back, they called Squire, all these producers, they said, tell us, what is the faith-based market? And basically Squire says, you know, between New York and LA, where you fly over, <laughs> there it is. That's it. <laughs> well, you know, you guys, too, and Squire, you make an interesting point, which is, that, you know, you start, and Luis, you've made this point too, which is you start something and you yeah. think it's a ball rolling down a hill. It's mm -hmm. not. It's a ball no. rolling up a series of hills and then a bigger hill, and then it falls back <laughs> in your lap, and then you push it back up again. So for those people, especially at this time of year, who think, man, I have tried. I have mm -hmm. tried. I've done everything I can do, and I just feel like it's not where I want it to be. What do you say to them? Well, I say what you were describing seemed to me like one of those Roadrunner cartoons in Bugs Bunny. Beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, I think that what we always have to do is uh, never accept a dis word. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that uh, that the enemy, Satan, whatever we call him, the, the demonic person, that he is the dis of darkness. Mm -hmm. He loves everything dis. He loves dishonest. He loves disorder. Mm -hmm. He loves discouragement. He loves disaster. Mm -hmm. He loves everything that is dis. Mm -hmm. So distance yourself from the dis. Yeah. And always look at the positive uh, side and, and find the positive side because it is always there. It goes back to my, my earliest hero was Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, who wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. Mm -hmm. And and he basically was saying, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You can think down or yeah. you can think up. You can you can you can actually be positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And you can't really be both at the right. same time. And so why don't you why don't you have a better life if you if you think positive? Therefore, I can say with honesty that I cannot remember a single day in this entire journey where I have been discouraged. I have never I been can't say that, however. <laughs> right. can I, you can? I can't. Because you as far as the 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 optimist of optimists, but but can the I the obnoxious the optimist. obnoxious optimist? He really does look at the glass, you know, half full, and you know, I I have a tendency to to, to not do that sometimes. It's, maybe it's my mother's Italian heritage. She said, "My glass is half full, you know, half empty, with my false teeth floating in it." But you know, the Lord, the Bible says, "Press toward the mark." And the thing is, pressing isn't easy. Hmm. You know, it's not just going, oh, uh, puff, puff, you know, I'll wait till this comes. Pressing toward the mark and resist the enemy and he'll flee. So it's always that hmm. combination of don't listen to that voice that's telling you I can't. Hmm. Just push, keep going forward. God's hmm. going to bring you over the finish line. But, you know, that this is how he he works. He puts us through the fire so he can, he can refine us. Right. And so when we get to that point, his it will be for his glory because we know that it couldn't have been us it mm. had to be him yeah. so you know that's my my yeah just to press press toward the mark yeah mm. and that's a hard that's a hard thing to do because as you're doing it you're you're wondering where god is in that process but at the same time had you not been put through that fire i think mm. there's no way to share his light in other words if the cookie's always on the table and it's always there then, yeah. then what then what is what is truly forged in that right that's and, right in these those difficult times where you feel like he's all you have yes that's the only way you realize he's all you need but Absolutely. but you have to get to a point yeah. where you feel yeah. like there is nothing there sometimes mm -hmm. I mean, and that's okay and, yeah. and, and, you know and i think sometimes we have this this fantasy of of God, where it's or it's God the the protector, or it's or it's God the provider that every single thing you ask for, He's just going to hand it right away to you. Mm -hmm. and sure. Asks, well, well, goodness, yeah. you know, or if something bad happens, well, God, machine, God, yeah. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah it's that yeah. thought, and that's just not the case. And I think that's it's so cool it, the what you guys do, and we're we're so inspired by it. So. Well, and I and I want to talk a little bit about you know as we roll into twenty four, and sometimes people are they set resolutions and they, mm -hmm. they come up with ideas of what they want to do, you know, to 
create better fitness or eat better mm -hmm. or travel more or whatever. One of the things I think would be really fun to talk about today and maybe encourage people who are, you know, maybe they have a great marriage, maybe things are going great in their marriage, or maybe they've had a really heck of a year and it's mm -hmm. kind of in, in trial mode and there's things that are more challenging. Um, let's talk a little bit about this 40 day prayer challenge. Oh. Mark and I did it. Explain to us a little bit about how this came to life. What was the thinking behind it? There is scientific research behind it. So it's not mm -hmm. just a, like a feel good kind of book. Tell us a little bit about the history of the 40 day prayer challenge. You want to start? Well, when we started praying together, right when we got together, we started seeing things happen. It's, it's like the, the combination of two people praying together where two or more gathered in my name. God was really in the midst. We call it our, our, we have our bagels and coffee with our CEO, you know, Christ right. almighty. And uh, so, and, and we, we lay our concerns before him. We pray for people. We, but we, we, would see God doing things in our lives. And we knew it was a result. It was a cause and effect of prayer. So, and then our marriage was so good. Mm -hmm. And so then we started sharing it with other couples and they said, well, what do you, we said, well, we just pray every day. Oh, well, we'd like to do that. And then, then we started seeing that they had evidence of how mm -hmm. it worked so great. So we, we knew that there was something there. So we went to Baylor University and we said, look, we know that, do, have you ever done a study about what happens when couples pray together for extended length of time, like five minutes a day for like 40 days? They said, no, we've never done anything like that, but we'll come behind beside you and we'll do it now. So we did the 40 day prayer challenge and we, we got couples to, to pray together five minutes a day for 40 days. And the results were phenomenal, miraculous. And so that's been our passion. Out of, and we love, obviously, we love to do our Godwink movies and all of that. But our, our real, our, I think our real heart. Our ministry is, uh, is really to get people to pray, to encourage partners to pray together. Mm -hmm. Now, our main focus is on married couples. But uh, couple, the 40 day, and we have couples who pray, which really speaks right to uh, married couples, that book, the most intimate act between a man and a woman, but 40 day prayer challenge was written so that we could expand that so that families can pray together, mm -hmm. two best friends and so forth. And that was really to also help the churches. I mean, there were a lot, a, a lot of mega churches have come along uh, mm -hmm. aside us, uh, uh, Gateway and A.R. Bernard's church and Lakewood and all of these churches. And, but we feel a little bit like the guy at the circus who spins plates on the end of mm -hmm. sticks. You know, you run up and down and yeah. you try to keep it going and so forth. We get the church going over here yeah. and then we get another church over here. And we say, oh, we got to get back over here. Because <laughs> it's and just so, mom and pop. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And so that gave birth to the, the idea, which is our dream for 2024. Yeah. And it's our resolution for 2024 <laughs> is to keep our noses to the grindstone yeah. and get a launch of the Pray Stay Challenge, which is a television series. Mm -hmm. And that television series will focus on six couples who are have got I issues in their marriage. Mm -hmm. We follow them. The people at home will pray mm -hmm. along with them because the one thing that they are going to arm themselves with is a promise to pray together five minutes a day mm -hmm. for 40 days. So 40 days is the end point. Mm -hmm. That's six weeks. And that's just in, in this is not an insignificant point, especially if you read the 40 day prayer challenge book, especially for men sometimes to sit down and pray with their wives. It's one thing to talk to your wife about the budget. It's one thing to yeah. talk to your wife about the kids. It's another thing to bear your soul to your wife, the woman you or the, or the husband, the man who you love more than anything else that, that, you open that door to be able to be yeah. that vulnerable. And that does, that is not something that should oh, be yeah. taken lightly. And you do have to work at it as you guys talk about. Yeah, yeah you do yeah. have to work at it. And we always say that, that because the, the subtitle is the most intimate act between a man and a woman. And it really is because mm -hmm. you become so vulnerable, but a lot of times guys will think, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. It seems like they're going to cross the, you know, the Brooklyn bridge, you know, and then I has too, too big of a leap for me when it's really just a footpath. And it's interesting because once a husband starts praying with his wife, he really takes he over the, the leader. leader. Yeah. It's, Every it's time it's just about, it's, it repeats itself over and over again. So many husbands went off and, and taught Sunday school classes yeah. after they had the 40 day prayer challenge and they, and, and the fear of, um, uh, 
of being vulnerable, yeah. I think is what that may be about. But the secret, I think, is the woman who demonstrated this for us, who had a husband who just resisted. Mm -hmm. And she said, look, I don't blame you. Um, he had had a lot of addictions in the past. So he was kind of keeping it all to mm. his, to his chest, in his chest. And so he, he said, uh, she, she said, would you just sit with me five minutes a day for 40 days? You don't have to say a word, just, mm -hmm. just sit with me and hold my hand and I will do the praying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened. And he's, well, well, wait a minute. He said, well, I'll, I'll listen to you, but I'll sit in the living room and you do it in the kitchen. Oh, so anyway, so so that's how they started. He sat in the living room listening to her in the kitchen, but he was sitting on one of those, you know, just an ordinary chair like this. And each day he kept moving the chair a little bit closer <laughs> to the kitchen. And by the time they were three weeks into it, he was at the kitchen table. Yeah. And by the fourth week, he was starting to prepare the, the coffee yeah, in the morning absolutely. and to open the Bible for a little scripture. Yeah. And it was just absolutely amazing how that, that transformation that. took mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. So we just believe that exemplifying a partnered prayer for people at home who are going through issues of marital issues so many are. that they can see a fun television show yeah. that has six couples going through the 40 day prayer mm -hmm. challenge four times in a cycle in a, in a season four cycles of six different couples yeah. in in the season and and they're going to get excited about that and they might say well you know in the next cycle why don't we take the 40 yeah. day prayer challenge right. too? Right. And we're going to have a little app that they can join up with where they can have their, my prayer score. And, uh, and all of this comes together. And we just believe that the goal of transforming the marital statistics mm. in America and changing ah. the, the downward or the, uh, the downward uh, spiral of happy marriages and, and, and lowering the, the, divorce, the rate. divorce rate mm. is something that we want to be able to see oh, in state by Jesus. state by state. Mm. Yeah. Well, and I say for the men that are listening to our show, which we do have a lot of men listeners, if you want to give your wife just a little extra gift, I oh, would that's a great recommend gift. this. Like I would, you know, because Mark's the one that actually brought it to me. And and Mark and I have always prayed. And he's been a guy who prays on his own. I've prayed on my own. We've prayed together. We pray with our kids. And so, uh, but we we honestly, I can be honest about this, that we didn't sit down and say, okay, we're going to do this for five minutes a day for 40 days. We didn't ever really make kind of that commitment level. And once we did, like you do see the impact of that and you yeah. want to go beyond the 40 days. For right. Sure. But yeah. I would say if you're looking as a guy, how can I really wow her? Right. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, women, I can speak this truthfully. Women have prayed and prayed and prayed for spiritual leader in yes. their husband. Uh, yeah. Before they get married, they're praying for that. When they when they get married, they're praying for that. And I yeah. would say this is such a blessing that you could give. Yeah. Yes. Blessing. Just yes. Yeah. And you know, one yeah. of the things that uh, wives will tell us over and over again is that when my when my husband and I prayed, I saw the heart of my husband. Yeah. And and when he started um, sharing things that maybe were bothering him at work or whatever, something that he was dealing with, that he maybe at one time thought he didn't want to share that with his wife, that maybe would, he would look weak. She saw that as strength. So, you know, what the enemy means for evil, God is going to turn around for good. And so that that is a great gift for the new year because it will literally change your life. I, I think of the guy who told us the story that he bought his wife a present for Christmas. He bought her a book. Mm. <laughs> well yeah. done. But then he said, uh, no, it was couples who pray. And it wasn't just the book. I put a note in there that I promised to pray with her five minutes a day for the 40 days of the new year. And that was such a great present for his family, for his kids. You know, yeah, his kids treasure. came up to him afterwards and said, hey, you know, three weeks into the into, into the 40 day prayer challenge, kids came up to him and said, hey, dad, 
what's wrong with you and mom? You're not arguing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it is funny too, because it, when you see the world we're in now, and I'd love your take on this and we'll get you out of here. Just a couple more questions. But um, when you see the world we're in now and what's happening, whether it's what's happening in Israel or what's happening in the country, mm. and you see how much chaos there is, it is very easy, I think, to, to fall into this trap of, oh my gosh, we're, we're headed to, to a really yeah. dark spot. When you do have a role in, in being able to bring more light into this world, so so there, so with you guys and what you see happening, how important is it now with what you're doing and, and what you see? Are you more concerned with the world we live in than 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 maybe you ever have been, or is this just these things happen and we have to keep fighting? No, people are scared. I mean, we you know we both have what Squire has his Godwink website, and I have Godwinkers. And people are scared, mm -hmm. you know, they, but, but we have to remember that Christ is in the chaos, you know, and sometimes God, in order to build his house and build that foundation strong, sometimes you have to, you have to break things down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to break a little bit of China. And I think that's what he's break. He's breaking things. And he's, he's, he's letting people see that, that, that it's fragile, we're, we're walking on fragile times here and that he can, what he can do is create the foundation that's going to build his house so that it won't be shaken. Yeah, I think so too. And I think that uh, everything that we are hearing uh, is, it is, I, I think it really is the worst time mm. that I can ever remember in yes. my lifetime. Oh boy, yeah. Uh, I, of course, we haven't lived through, you know, the kind of wars like the, the Second World War. Well, you were in the Civil the... War. You're, you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. the Civil yeah. War. Yeah. <laughs> Very close to Lincoln. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. But, <laughs> but, but the fact of the matter is, is it really is the worst that we can imagine. And the, the fear that oh. we are going to lose the country mm. because we see the Constitution oh, just yeah. being trampled. Yeah. We just, we, we just, there's yeah. so much distrust that we have of all of our institutions. Yeah. Everybody Everyone. is distrusting everybody. It oh, isn't yeah. a left or a right thing. Everybody is distrusting everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and I believe that uh, this is exactly where God needed to yeah. get us. To let us and, know that only and, he and, 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 and I say, I believe, but every single prophet that I've heard has oh, said the same true. thing yeah. that that they believe that the great awakening yes. is coming and the great awakening mm -hmm. uh the the third great awakening in the world oh, yes. in, in America is actually going to be it's, the great Americaning and and great awakening in the world and it's happening and, already and, and it really is happening mm -hmm. if you go out and you 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 can find it in the pockets of America mm -hmm. that it is on a roll yeah. but what we and see in colleges on, we love that in the universities there's a great revival happening. but that's not covered on the news no, we, no you know it really question. isn't covered on the news mm -hmm. and for for reasons yeah. you know they don't want you to know mm -hmm. that that's going on and uh and so i just think that we're going to have such surprises mm -hmm. of joy in 2024 yeah that we can't even imagine i believe it. and i'm not talking about even at the end of 2024 mm. i'm talking about during the first i think before before the fourth of july mm. on 2024 we are going to feel in immense joy and um and I don't know what it's going to be, but I bet it's going to be a surprise. Mm. I'd love his opportunity. We're going to pray about it. Yeah, we it's need great. you just to make recordings for us all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> that we can play every day on our phone. It would be lovely. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to get you out on this one thing. We love the Godwink stories. Tell us one more from your either your Christmas book or one of your other movies. Give us a little fun, one little more story for us as we as we head out on this holiday season. Why don't you tell your spot? Oh my, well, this is spotties. kind of a fun story. This yeah. also is in the yeah. Godwinks yeah. book, Spotty. Yes, but yeah. when I was a little girl, I, on my Christmas list, I would always put, you know, want a dog or a puppy or, and my mother would say to me, you know, it's a New England, you're, Louise, you're not gonna get a dog. <laughs> and the, the thing is my mother's grandfather was bitten by a rabid dog and died oh. he died so her beloved grandfather so she was scared to death of dogs so i could understand that but every year i would do you know put it on there 
And finally, she said to me, look, let me just tell you something, Louise. The only way you're going to get a dog is if someone dies and leaves the dog to you in their will. OK, so no more. It's over. <laughs> so Mr. Stelberger, who was our tenant, he had an elderly mother who had a dog named Spotty. And he knew I loved dogs. And he said, would you dog sit Spotty? And so I lived to see Spotty. Spotty was like my best friend. Couldn't wait to see Spotty. Then one day, Mr. Stelberger knocked on our door and he said, I have some sad news. My mother passed away, but she left something for Louise in her will. And my mother said, she left something for Louise in her will. <laughs> said, yeah, it's in the back seat. I'll go get it. It was Spotty on a leash. She left me Spotty in her will. And my mother's words, I said, Ma, can I, can I keep her? And she's and she looks at me. She said, unless someone leaves it to you in a will. And she said, well, I guess I don't have a choice. She ended up actually loving Spotty, too. But <laughs> but it was just it's so typical how God hears the prayers of little girls yeah. and what he will do to answer your prayers. Yes, he uh, will. He'll kill Mrs. Stelberger. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. It had to be done. I mean, look, uh, you had to do it. Strange ways. <laughs> I mean, yeah. someone had to be sacrificed oh, yeah. to get that dog. Well, now Ava's going to be thinking because she wants a cat so bad. And we've said yes, no a million our daughter times. Ava. Yeah. So oh. she's like, oh, hey, guys, you heard the story. I'm just yeah. going to start praying for somebody to leave me a cat. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> I tell you what, Ava, we'll do the same rule for you that <laughs> Louise had for her, which yeah. is if someone should unfortunately pass uh, and they leave yeah. you a cat. You can have yeah. it. Well, if it is God's will, then <laughs> let it be so. Exactly right. Exactly. Uh, uh, thank you guys for joining us and just yeah, being guys... a voice of encouragement, whether it's in an entertainment. Uh, uh, um, uh, you know, anytime. if you're looking for upbeat shows on Netflix, please check out their shows. Rescuing Ruby. Oh, it's, great. So, yeah, it is. it's great for your family. Yep. It's encouraging. It's not overly cheesy like some of the movies that he likes to watch over there. <laughs> well, no, uh, and that's, plot, I will say there's a plot actually in a real script. Well, and no, and that's story. the great part about and I will say this and I'm and I'm not, you know, I don't it, Kathy Lee was the perfect person for the Godwinks because she was well cast in that role. Like somebody yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like it was that perfect sort of thing where she had the gravitas to be the person who was sort of in that role to guide the movie through. And, and it, and it definitely is at another level. Now I will agree. There yeah. are some of the movies I may watch that may not, you know, maybe yeah. a little predictable, yeah. but this was different. It was great. So we love it. And you guys, thank you so uh, much. Thank We're you. blessed. Oh. To be and, and God bless great. you guys. Merry Christmas, Merry Happy Christmas. New Year, yes. and let's do it again soon. Let's God talk. bless Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good wishes and God wins. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys. Merry Christmas, everybody. We will see you guys after the holidays again. Yes. Right? We'll come back we'll at some back point. We'll be back with yeah. more episodes after the holidays, we promise. Enjoy. Merry Christmas. You've been listening to the No Doubt About It podcast. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, rate, and review. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at No Doubt About It Podcast. No Doubt About It. The No Doubt About It Podcast is a Choose Adventure Media production. See you next time on No Doubt About It. There is no doubt about it.